Welcome to Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. I'm your host, Earl Tima, alongside my co-host, my big unk, Alan Tima. Before we go any further, I want you all to subscribe to the channel, like the videos, leave a comment, and most importantly, hit the notification bell. That way, you all know the Dream Teamers when we upload new content, all right? Uh, we're going to get right to it. You know what? Before we even get there, Happy New Year to everyone. Uh, we hope that you prosper in this new year. Stay focused. All your dreams come rea- become a reality. Anything you want to add to that? Yes. Happy New Year. And thank God for, the, for seeing another year. No doubt. You heard it here. Thank God for seeing another year. All right. We're going to get right to it. You all know that we're LeBron fans. Some like to call us bandwagon fans. Whatever you want to call it. But we want to dissect something or even speak about something. We want you all to be in tune with it. The question is whether or not LeBron's mindset early on in games or throughout the entire game is hindering the Lakers, not not offense, but maybe just their flow of the game. Um, We know he gets the stats. They get W's because obviously they're the champions. But early on in the season, we've seen some things and we just want to speak on it. So you're going to leave your comments in the comment section throughout this video. Let us know what you're feeling about it. And we're just going to touch on it right now. My big Uncle Al, what do you think about that? It is his mindset hindering the overall play of the team? From what I see, yes. I'm not liking what I see. And being a LeBron fan, and so many people constantly been, and I've been in so many debates concerning LeBron. And... Uh, there were several people that always says to me that he's stat hunts, and I never saw that in him. You know, um, whether is this something new or was I blinded from being a fanboy? <laughs> I don't know. But this season, me watching, seeing the offensive power that they do have, mostly because his previous teams, he was the only ball handler or playmaker. That was pretty much on all his teams. And then I guess that's why people always would say that it was difficult to play with LeBron. And it never made sense to me because it appeared that he made the game easier. But now that he has offensive players, a point guard, another playmaker like Schroeder, and um, to me it seemed like he's hindering the game. There's times when Schroeder gets going and they look invincible and they go up 19, 20 points and LeBron comes either back in the game or now the ball is back in his hands and it seems like he's he's just trying to get points. All right, so before, all right, so question. Obviously for them to go up 19 or 20 early in the game, does he set the tone and then when he is benched and come back in, he kills the momentum or is it? No, that's the point. He's not even setting that tone. Mm -hmm. He's coming out early, and he's he's on the attack, but not aggressively. He's 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 on the attack, but he's going to the whole half-heartedly, you know. And and it's not the I'm watching. He's been blowing so many layups because this is the NBA. When you go to the rack, you have to go to the rack. Uh, he's getting a shot beat up against the backboard. I mean, we watched that against Portland. Uh, Jones was having, I thought he was playing volleyball. You know what I mean? Uh, but but at the same time, it, it's, it's, we understand LeBron a little bit. The simple fact that it's, it's not a race, it, it's, it's a marathon for him. And uh, he's taking his time. But to me, it appears that it's hindering the team. For the first time, I can look at it and I can actually see it, that it's hindering the team. So what allowed you to see that? Was it the fact that he has different personnel now? Because you know Dennis Schroeder can ball, so now you're saying, all right, he has an extra ball handler. Maybe he should fall back a bit. Is right. that what it is, or is it just that you... No, I, I, before before you would expect that LeBron had to do this because his the players that he usually play with, they're offensively limited. Yeah, yeah, to spread the floor. Right, and let him create for you. Now he needs to be working off of players, and I wonder is he, he has to prove to me this season that he can work off the ball. And I think he needs to do that a little bit more, especially at, in, in his 17th season. 18th. 18th season, I mean, excuse me. This 18th season, if he want to expand and keep playing, this, he needs he need breaks, and this is the time this is of, of his breaks. Because what I'm seeing is Schroeder, 
is the type of player, he just balls, and he's going to – I really like him. You know what I mean? So he's on attack, and then LeBron is, to me, it appears stat hunting. And it's taken away from Anthony Davis' game. Mm, that, that's about He's fun. not able to get into a rhythm. Because you, you've seen the last couple of games, especially against Portland, he seemed as though he was not even there, like frustrated. He shouldn't be. Because both of them are to blame for that. Mm-hmm. Because he doesn't come out aggressively. And he's not in the, the position where he should be. Let little men defend him. You letting... <laughs> Covington is a great defender. Yes, he's nice. But he cannot deal with you on the post. So there's no reason for you to be out there shooting 20-foot jump shots when you can be having him down on the post. And if you're down there, there's no way that anybody could just overlook you. Yeah. All right, so I have another question. You spoke about how Bron, you feel as though he he goes to get his stats, right? He's going to get those anyway if he just played with just his talent alone, right? right? Would the game be easier? Now that if he, he has a ball handler who can feed the post, if he elected to get on the post, get the easy baskets, and then get his rest? That's the point. Yeah. That's the point of what what of what, what the organization built this team apart. Bon, get another playmakers on the team so, so to, to lighten up his load. Yeah. And to make the game easier. The problem is, early on in the season, LeBron is on the post. But he's on the post playing around. Mm, speak on that. Speak on. If that. you watch him, he gets on the post. He's he's he's, and then he has and, and he's on the post, and then he has switch it into a square up. Yep. He square up to the basket with with them on him, and he's dribbling in one spot between his legs behind his back, and it, it, for for what reason? It, it doesn't it doesn't make sense to just shoot a fadeaway. Of of of. It was he was 12 feet from the basket. Now he took the step, did all that dribbling. He's 15, 20 feet away from the basket, and now he's shooting a fadeaway. Mm-hmm. Uh, it doesn't make sense to me. What is he doing? And it's, and I can tell that it's, it's not even the way he normally plays. Mm-hmm. So I know when LeBron, in the beginning of the season, LeBron always he, he's never that playoff mode. We understand that marathon. But and I never saw where it hinders the team. Every time LeBron is in the game, in the last two games, I must go by. When he was in the game, that's how the team. That's how. That's how they lost to Portland. Yeah. Portland was able to just hang around, hang around, hang around, then go and still off, still a game, and they wouldn't have been able to hang around because they were set to be blown out. Yeah. Same thing in the uh, San Antonio game. Yeah. Although they won that game, that was supposed to be 25, 30 point blowout, and the bench supposed to, and the starters supposed to be on the bench. And everybody was supposed to be in the game <laughs> for the fourth quarter. But LeBron allowed his play allowed them to hang around and keep keep the deficit between nine and eleven yet not eleven points. And it is it's really making me angry. And I've never been angry with LeBron like I have in one a win and then the second one a, 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 a the first one a loss against Portland and the second one a win against San Antonio. But Aldridge didn't play. Yeah. And if and if San Antonio was a better team, a better team would have hung around and stole that game down the stretch. And LeBron has to really, I know they took the guy, they're trying to fill each other out. Yeah. You know, it's a new team and all that, but he has to do better. So what you're pretty much saying, well, Dream Team is out there. I know a lot of you are saying, well, they're the Lakers. You're looking at the roster and you're saying that, well, it's a great team. They're going to win games. But what you're stating is, is not based off because they're going to win games off pure talent anyway. Right. But it's when you watch the game yeah. and you see that a 20-point lead could have blossomed to 30, but now it's down to five. And now you have a game at right. the end of the third quarter when you could have been getting low management the right way mm-hmm. because you got the team out of there. But people be, to me, is making me wonder about the, the LeBron haters yeah. when they used to say, He's selfish. To me, I think this is a selfish movement that he's ha- he's having because if he does that, he won't be on the floor. If he plays the right way right now with this team, they'll be up by 30 and there'll be no need for him to play. I think he allows the game to stick because he's just that picky when it comes to the game. Yeah. He, feel he, he can control 
the whole game no matter what the situation is and and, and I don't think and and it, it might be again he's LeBron James and it could be and I'm hoping that that's what it is being the fan that I am no of his is that he's putting his team in positions where they're going to have to they'll be in those positions when it comes to playoff time and they know how to play in them. All right, so I'm going to play devil's advocate there because wouldn't it be best if he played the way that we all know that he can play, get the team out of there? We know it's a team game, but we're focusing on LeBron's play as of late. Get them out of there early. Now you can get the reserves in there to get the minutes, and now they can learn how to play with each other. You're LeBron. You should know how – you're going to learn or figure out how to play with anyone. But it's different with the kind of pressure that will be on you. If you're up 30 and now you're getting minutes or – if you're up nine or you're down nine mm-hmm. and getting minutes, you got to know how to play under those kind of pressures. Now it's easy to play when you when you, when you, when you're blowing the team no, out. No, but certain players won't get minutes unless you get them out of there. Exactly. But and, I, and LeBron know he is. That's how I stay on the floor. And as I stay on the floor, that's how I get stats. That's a valid point. Because but- right now the predictions were. That Anthony Davis will be the MVP, and I never, ever thought that I would. I don't. From what I see right now, I don't like the chances of him getting the MVP because the way LeBron is playing to me is selfish. Yeah. And Anthony Davis, being that he's not an aggressive, give me the ball type player, LeBron controls whether he's going to have the MVP or not. And the way LeBron is playing, there's no way that Anthony Davis can get the MVP. But what I do see is Schroeder and Anthony Davis starting to get some chemistry on the two-man ball with them with the pick and roll and pick and pop. With those two, they're working. But even that takes a little away from Anthony Davis because Schroeder is a scorer. And he's and he can score the short, he can shoot the three, he can get and he can get to the basket. So a lot of that attention that's going to Anthony Davis right now is opening up Schroeder. But then after after, after the scouting reports come, people are gonna be trying to stop him. And that's gonna open up Anthony Davis. So with that part, that's why I can see what's building there. But I don't see LeBron building any chemistry with anyone else other than Marcus Hall. All right, so sum it all up, all right? We all know that the Lakers are going to be there in the very end, the thick of things, right? As a fan, as as a spectator of the game, who tunes in on a daily basis, this can be a rundown that. of what you want to see LeBron do going forward and um, how it can increase the chemistry of the team. I want to see LeBron play ball the way it's supposed to be played. The way we, as fans expect for it to be played we know how talented you are but at the same time you don't have a team where you need to be taking defensive plays off now when you get on the floor that's what we learned (laughs) you get on the floor you lay it all out there lay it all out there right now that's what we want to see not I mean it's like he's playing pickup game It's, it's a difference the way he's playing right now and, if, and even with him playing like that, they still dangerous in the in the in the West. No doubt. But I, I, that's not something entertaining. We st- I stay up to 10, 11 o'clock at night, uh, twelve on the East or one Coast. o'clock. Yeah, in the East Coast, and to watch these games. Not, I, I don't want to see that. I can go to the, to the park or, or to the the basic Martin Luther King Center, the YMCA, yeah. and watch the kids do, go one on one, playing around, taking the ball between their legs, not going nowhere, mm-hmm. saying ooh. <laughs> I, I can do that. And one, it's over. No Mixtapes. Right. And you and you don't even have that type of handle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah, just, just focus on your strengths, right? Yeah. And the team is going to be all right. All right, so Dream Team is out there. Let this segment be a testament or a reminder that here at Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast, myself, Earl Tima, alongside my uncle Al Tima, we may be fans of certain players, but we're never biased. Never. We're going to speak the truth, mm-hmm. all fact. And this is why we did the segment regarding LeBron, because we're watching the games. And although it's leading to some W's, they've got a chip out of the equation, we feel as though going forward, 
it won't bode well if he doesn't change his game a bit. Making right? the game harder. No doubt. And that's the perfect way of saying it. He's making the game harder. So once again, subscribe to the channel. This is Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. Hit the notification bell, like the videos, leave a comment. Come on, engage with us. Let us yeah. know how you feel. Mm-hmm. Comment section, let us know how you feel. Once again, Happy New Year. It's going to be a great, prosperous 2021. Wishing the best for everyone out there. Team Sports Entertainment, the podcast. Earl Tima, Big Unk, Alan Tima. Y'all be good. Much love. 2021.